Hey guys and welcome back to another video. This is part two of my April wrap up. Let's get started. So getting straight into it, I finished off Cool Baby by Morgan Jenkins. This one I listened to as an audio book and it was narrated by Janice Abbott Pratt and I really enjoyed this one and this is about a matriarchal generational story um, that searches for familial connections, the power of traditions and the dark corners of the human heart and this one I gave a four out of five stars. I actually think it probably would have been a five stars had I read this physically because I struggled to make the key character connections and the reason I think I would have really enjoyed it is I've been reading quite a few kind of uh, generational stories following a matriarch and I've been absolutely loving them of late and this one I was really into it but I just I lacked that connection I guess um, and I can only assume it was because of the way I read it I think. Um, despite this though it was clearly a powerful novel with interesting and strong characters. The main theme of this is of course the cool baby which is something I thought I hadn't heard before but then when I looked it up I realised it's because I had known of the term called mermaid baby where the baby is born in the um, still in the sack and in this story it's quite a you know a rare and wonderful thing depending on your perspective um, but basically they the the, one of the main families in this story um, cut up parts of their coal and sell it to people. Um, so obviously there's a lot of interesting topics and conversations um, depending on which perspective you're reading from within this book and yeah I found it fascinating. Especially once sort of our main main character Hallow was born it brought into the mixture a bit more of this kind of grey area around particularly those that were doing the um, the coal cutting I guess you would say or coal cutting I'm not too sure how to pronounce it um as someone from Britain to be honest <laughs> but um yeah it was a really intriguing and unique story I would say I did have two quotes for this one but I will pick out one but don't get involved with those people us women selling parts of our bodies is just unnatural slavery is over they just didn't get the memo up next I continued on with the spooks apprentice books by Joseph Delaney and this one was the spooks blood and it was narrated by Thomas Judd and uh, this one I listened to through audible and the next one that I pick up now I actually have that physical book so it'll be different to read the physical book as I haven't read them physically since the first like four of them everything else has pretty much been audio so it'll be an interesting um, direction just reading it physically for a change so Thomas Ward's final battle with the fiend is coming ever closer but he's never felt more alone Tom must risk his life against a vampire god in this particular story this one I gave a four out of five stars I thoroughly enjoyed it I loved the focus being more on like the vampire law but within the spooks um, world I love vampire laws I love vampire stories but it's always interesting to see you know how this uh, particular author is going to present that kind of myth and law within his universe so I really enjoyed the um, representation of vampires in this world from um, the author Joseph Delaney a lot of the action-packed moments, oh my god, they were so tense, my heart was in my throat, I was incredibly on the edge of my seat, I just, I kept speeding through, I was just, like, so most of the time I was listening to it whilst I was at the gym, and I'd find myself just stopping, <laughs> which is probably bad, because I'm, like, lifting weights and stuff, but I found myself just stopping in the middle of a set, and being like, oh my god, oh my god, what's happening next, I just couldn't, it's almost like if I had the book in front of me, I'd be like this, you know, but my eyes were just going back and forth I felt <laughs> into space like staring into space as I was listening to all the action take place so I really did enjoy that and I also loved Alice's personality kind of bloom a little bit more in here it definitely developed her character more she had a, a deeper growth I would say but it's interesting to note that it was more going against what um Tom and the spook was saying not so much that she was going to the dark dark side but more so that she was kind of developing her own emotions and feelings around why she did certain things and it was always for the greater good in her opinion um but you know sometimes a lot of the times that would 
definitely rub Tom particularly the wrong way around especially as they had such a strong connection throughout the whole series so far so yeah it was interesting to kind of see conflicts that emerged between them because they weren't on the same page with a lot of um their reasoning so again it, it built her character up but yeah that was a really good book I'm glad once again to be back in this next world. up unfortunately I have a DNF this one was a random one I just found on audible and it's the couple on cedar close I just like the name I'm not gonna lie um this is by Anna Lou Weatherly and it was narrated by James Laley and to be honest this is gonna sound really silly but I didn't know it was a detective story I thought it was mainly just like a domestic thriller but as soon as I realized that we were going to be following as soon as I looked at it properly I'm not gonna lie um because it, it literally says detective something or dc something in the title or underneath um as soon as i realized it was going to be more of that narrative than the actual thrillers which I'm, I'm assuming i mean i don't read anymore but anyway i just i wasn't interested at all and the parts that i did listen to it just didn't captivate me i only listened to five percent but i really just wasn't invested from the beginning but in case you guys are interested um it follows this it follows this like street of characters i guess every summer the residents of cedar close through their summer barbecue but for laurie it's her first time meeting the neighbors and the first time she discovers her husband is having an affair so yeah i mean that might pique your interest um, all right next up i pretty much blitzed through the whole of the black star series which is um speculative fiction featuring black authors and they're all short stories so i read the first book and then i jumped to another book and then i pretty much um blasted out the rest it's a collection of six stories so these were all free on audible until may 1st and i managed to quickly kind of get in on that um so i had the visit in my audible downloads for a while but then i realized it was expiring and i'd also realized that all of them were on there so i was like okay let's do it quick 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 um and this is by chimamanda ngozi adichie and it was narrated by nyambi nyambi and this one is so it's really difficult to explain a lot of these especially because they are such such short stories like some of them last in 15 20 pages they are very very petite um so i just kind of literally took the first couple of lines from the goodreads description but it has more depth and it probably gives you a little bit more context um if you was to read more so definitely go ahead and check out a better blurb than the one that i'm giving you but i just didn't want to spoil too much because some of them do end up giving way more of the plot away than it needs to but alas um so uh, the visit follows a powerful matriarchy that reshapes the world and two men confronting the past and future this one i gave a three out of five stars it was an interesting spin on the my body um my choice movement it kind of had like the i guess the gender re reversal of it um where it was the men that were saying you know my body my choice because the main theme was that there was this no masturbation rule and women were kind of like the elitist um superior i don't know <laughs> It was more of a matriarch as the as the uh, blurb says and men were having quite a lot of uh, well a lot of the shit that women have to be honest so it was more of like a gender reversal uh switch around i guess you could say it had some interesting themes to think on but ended far quicker than i expected so i felt like i couldn't get as much as i was expecting to get out of it as soon as i went into it it was pretty much finished you know? oh i lied and said that i had another book in between the rest of these um the black stars series but i think i was thinking of the cedar close book and it was like the dnf so i digress the next book in the black stars series was the black pages and that was by nendi okorafor narrated by naomi aki this one says, by fate and fire, a being of four millennia old is reborn in Mali, sharing history and ancestral wisdom. This I gave a 2.5 out of 5 stars. It felt like it lacked substance and gave more depth to the full blurb than the actual story. And this is one of the ones where I kind of tried to skim just a little bit because, as I say, the synopsis sort of gives away the whole story, I feel. But it simultaneously felt both really slow and really fast. However, I did enjoy that the book in this had its own kind of character as, as a, in a way, or more so a channel for a character because it is this, this being, this ancient being that kind of rises through the pages. Um, so it's kind of like a portal for, for that. And I guess that's why it felt like a character in itself before the character actually emerged. Um, I think this would have benefited uh, being a longer form piece of fiction, but alas, 
and that is what we have. The third one of the series was 2043 A Mermaid I Should Turn To Be by Nishi Shaw, leverated by LeVar Burton. And this one says African descended USians are finally obtaining reparations underwater. So I gave this one a three out of five stars. I absolutely love Mermaid Law and it kind of like a similar thing to what I was saying about the vampires when it came to the spook's blood by Joseph Tadaly. I love Mermaid Law so it was always really cool to see kind of a new spin, a new take on that. And this one took the myth in a completely like different direction than I'd really thought about before. I think the closest that I have read in that sort of aspect where it talks about identity race that sort of thing alongside the mer uh, mermaids is the deep by solomon rivers i think was and also um oh, dang it what is that book song below water sorry by bethany c morrow um i agree with some of the other reviews that i saw on goodreads mentioned that they thought it was a bit too heavy on the actual sea dwellings rather than you know the oppression that got them to having these reparations within the sea and not actually on land like what was the meaning behind that it was almost like a back-end compliment why under the sea of all the places and why now um but despite having a confusing and abrupt ending and kind of wishing it gave more of information regarding to the build-up of this i still very much enjoyed it anything mermaid -y, i take some sort of <laughs> good from it you know i just i find it so fascinating the fourth story in this collection is the alien skies by ct ritzy and this is narrated by india moore and the synopsis for this said accidents happen in the strange realm of the african union system one of them sends two humans to the far side of a stargate and this i gave a three out of five stars I was undecided on this one. I was very interested in the dynamic of space travel and how the planet was broken up into philosophy um, when we got to this particular planet and also the navigation of grief whilst on this kind of sort of long haul journey um, amongst the stars. But something was just missing and I really don't know what it was. I, I just struggled to have any kind of, not empathy because I felt things, but it was like a lack of connection in some way and I just I don't know what it was that was causing that disconnect for me. The fifth one in the Black Stars collection of stories is A Clap Back by Nalo Hopkinson read by Adenrelli Ojo and this is a past struggle for racial equity could achieve a profound future victory in the form of fashion. It actually had a really interesting synopsis. My review for this is incredibly short but basically we're following this fashion designer who has found a way to have these like memory nanobots infused with the clothing that she's created so that you have a chance for until however long like the nanobots can survive for or whatever um until they like break down and deplete of living the <laughs> memories and emotions of enslaved oppressed people which sounds interesting at first until you hear how um not cool that is until <laughs> you realize you're like hold on a minute that's awful you're giving everyone this opportunity to basically exploit another person's suffering and our other character is basically zoned in on that and she's like nah that's not gonna happen this is not right you are exploiting a culture of people they're suffering in their history so i thought this had amazing commentary and it was incredibly poignant and i really enjoyed this one okay and the last book of the month is also the final book of the black stars series and that is travel the spaceways by victor laval and it's narrated by brian tyree henry it's an otherworldly interference in real world new york or delusions um we basically follow this man called grimace who's living on the streets and he has this very interesting um kind of spiritual journey that he's going on but he, he gets these messages through like fizzy drink cans and he, he even he himself is questioning whether this is true enlightenment or whether he's actually just gone completely delusional um, and he's just kind of riding with it and then he meets kim who shows grimace some just pure kindness and the story kind of continues and develops from there I wish I had listened to this one all at once like I did with the others. I think because it was such a very trippy story, it suffered from me having listened to it in two halves. I don't know what, why that happened. I think it was just a circumstance of where I was out and about at the time that it just fell in that way. But regardless of that, I did really enjoy Grimace and his unique spiritual journey and this enlightenment, if that was what it was. Um, 
and I also loved the kindness that Kim showed to him and having a different perspective when it came to Grimace kind of questioning if what he's hearing from these fizzy drink cans is real or not so I really enjoyed that dynamic but I think it would do me good to kind of have a go over and listen to it again all at once to sort of fully melt that all properly into my head. <laughs> I was also on the book tour for The Art of Prophecy by Wesley Chu and unfortunately I didn't get to finish it in time. I still put up my review, I had like 90 pages um, by the time my review was supposed to go up and I mentioned that I hadn't yet finished it but it was looking like it was going to be um, quite a good read for me it ended up being a favorite which is great but but i'm thinking i'm going to talk about that in a separate video entirely so if you would like to see my full review of the art of prophecy by wesley chu then definitely keep an eye out for that but there we are my friends that wraps up today's video and also concludes part two of my april wrap up with all the books that i read during the month let me know what you guys had picked up throughout the month if you took part in any buddy reads or book tours yourself and um, what your favorite book was i would love to know as usual let me know and i shall catch you in another video soon bye